Welcome to Christ Life Today, where we explore the glorious realities of life in Jesus Christ. But I want to talk tonight about God, the Trinity. Um, salvation, true salvation, has to come from the one and only true God. So it's our goal as Christians to get to know him better. And uh, it's not surprising to me that uh, Satan attacks viciously the doctrine of the Trinity because in doing so, he tears down what people understand or who people understand God to be. Um, and so I've had some situations where I've interacted with different people who uh, do not believe in the Trinity, some who would call themselves Christians, some who are members of other cults. Um, but if you share your faith somewhere along the line, someone's going to raise the question about the Trinity. So I felt led that uh, tonight we would look at that. And so I'm going to start out with a few verses. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 6, 4, uh, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. All right? One God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And I'm going to take a quick jump over into Jude and read the first verse of the book of Jude. <clears throat> Jude the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James to them who are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. And then John 20, 28, um, which is uh, doubting Thomas uh, when he finally sees the Lord all the others had seen him in an instant, instant before this one. And Thomas said, no, I'm not going to believe unless I see him, unless I put my fingers in the scars in his hands and in his side. And Jesus appears uh, to the disciples and he says, we'll read verse 27. And then saith he unto Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach Thither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but be believing. So, after Thomas had spouted off at the mouth saying, I won't believe unless, of course Jesus wasn't there when Thomas said that, but he knew Thomas said it. Uh, oh, I'm going off track already. Uh, but, uh, so here Jesus shows up and he says, Thomas, do what you said you got to do because I want you to be believing and not faithless. And what does Thomas say? And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Um, all right. Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. And this is the story of uh, Ananias and Sapphira lying about how much they sold their house or the property for and telling Peter that, you know, we gave, here's the whole, here's the whole proceeds. We sold our house, here's all of it. And they lied and they kept some back. <clears throat> and uh, in verse 3, but Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So in verse 3, Peter says, Satan filled his heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. And in verse 4, uh, Peter says, you haven't lied to men, but unto God. Okay, so, out of those passages, <clears throat> there's some observations that we can make. 
Very clearly, the Bible says there's only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, one Lord. Um, so the Bible clearly tells us there's only one God. All right? Uh, in Jude 1.1, 1, the Bible says that God the Father is God. All right? Um, in John 20, 28, Thomas says Jesus is God. Uh, and in Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is God. But there's only one God. The Father's God, the Son's God, and the Holy Spirit's God. But there's only one God. All right? So that's what the Bible tells us about the nature of God. There's only one, but the Bible ascribes Godhood to three different persons, three different individuals. Um, thus, the doctrine of the tr Trinity. Those, those verses... Uh, sum that up. I mean, there's no other, there's no other legitimate way of explaining that. Um, but what are some of the possible scenarios in light of these observations? Well, the answer and the possible scenario that I go with, which is the truth, is that the Trinity is the truth. Within the nature of the one true God, there eternally exists three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, out of those verses, we can walk away with the truth, which is the Trinity is the truth. I mean, there's only one God, and the Bible says the Father is God, the Bible says the Son is God, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is God, but it says there's only one God. The Trinity is the only legitimate way of looking at it. Uh, but there are other ways that you'll hear presented, uh, and this is not a complete list necessarily, but uh, uh, you can look at those verses and say, there is no Trinity, is Jesus only. <clears throat> uh, and Jesus manifests himself in, as the Father and as the Holy Spirit, but it's Jesus only. So there is no Trinity, and there are people... Uh, Christian sects that uh, uh, believe Jesus only. And uh, so Jesus is uh, the Father and he's the Holy Spirit. Um, as we go through this, hopefully it will be very difficult to justify that um, idea. Um, what do you call a person who carries on three-way conversations with himself. <laughs> Schiz Schizophrenic. Uh -huh. <laughs> Schizophrenic, in need of psychological help. Well, if in fact it's Jesus only, there's a number of uh, snippets in the Bible where there's a conversation going on amongst God. Uh, and um, if it's just Jesus only, he's carrying on the conversation with himself. That by definition, would be schizophrenic. Um, now, within the Trinity, this is not a problem. Uh, and we're going to look at some of those passages as we go along, uh, <clears throat> and so on and so forth. But beyond that, um, and we'll look at this too, but beyond that, <clears throat> how, how is it right for Jesus to manifest himself as his own father. That doesn't make sense. Um, and why would there be a need for the Father and the Holy Spirit, you know, if the Trinity weren't true and it's Jesus only, what would be the need? Okay? As we go through some of the verses that I pulled out, we'll see some of this a little bit more fully. Uh, another idea that's postulated is there is no Trinity, but only the Father. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not God, uh, although the Bible says they are. Um, <clears throat> some of these ideas would have, uh, there's one uh, large cult nearby uh, that um, would say that uh, Jesus is a lesser God. 
God the Father is the Almighty God and Jesus is the Mighty God. Uh, when I encounter them, I ask them, okay, is Jesus a true God or is he a false God? Because if he's a true God, albeit a lesser God, then you people have two gods. My Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. If they say he's a false God, then I say, Find me one thing in the Bible that says anything negative about Jesus, unless it comes from the mouths of Pharisees or scribes or other religious leaders, or Satan himself. Uh, you don't have anything worth talking about if you tell me Jesus is a false God. And if you tell me he's a true God, well, then you guys have two gods, and you're still worshiping a false God. Um, so... There are others, other ideas about it's just the Father only, and some of those go kind of the reverse of the Jesus only ones where it's the Father and He manifests Himself as the Son and the Holy Spirit, and usually they'll go uh, so far as to include other manifestations of God uh, as in the Old Testament, you know, different, you know, the guy in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and other, they'll say, well, those are all just manifestations of God the Father, the only true God. Uh, <clears throat> another one, that another one of our uh, large cults in America um, uses is uh, <clears throat> no trinity. They are indeed three distinct gods, but they're one in purpose. So that's how they get around here over Israel. The Lord thy God is one God. Um, this cult has three gods for this earth and then millions and millions of other gods uh, who have all populated their own earths and so on and so forth. Uh, I purposely don't give the cult names because I don't want to send anybody out looking for their websites uh, and try, you know because I'm just not going to do it. Uh, but when you encounter the doctrine, you know what it is, all right? Uh, so um, <clears throat> so I have, uh, John, you can turn here, John chapter 5. We're going to look at uh, a few <clears throat> verses here and ask some questions because uh, this is one that uh, is, is good questions for the group that says Jesus only in particular. Uh, <clears throat> John chapter 5, I'm going to read verses uh, 31 through 37, and in red letter edition Bibles, these are all in red, so this is all Jesus speaking. And Jesus says, <clears throat> If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, speaking of John the Baptist, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I received not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. So yeah, John bore testimony of me, Jesus is saying, but I got a better witness than John. Um, and verse 35 uh, he was a burning and shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. So now the testimony is getting even better. Uh, Jesus is doing the works of his Father. But he makes it crystal clear in verse 37 here. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And I'll read 38 and finish this section. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. So... We see in this passage, Jesus said that he didn't bear witness of himself. Somebody else did. Okay. We see that Jesus says his father bears witness of him. God the Father bears witness of him. 
So, my question for the people who say it's Jesus only and he's manifesting himself in different personalities um, is, did Jesus lie and actually bear witness of himself while pretending to be his father? Because Jesus, point blank, said, I don't bear witness of myself. If I bear witness of myself, my witness isn't true. And he's referring to Old Testament law that says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every fact be established. Uh, so Jesus himself, out of his own mouth, said, I don't bear witness of myself. So if you have a Jesus-only belief, did Jesus in fact lie and bear witness of himself while he was pretending to be his father? Because he said he didn't bear witness of himself. He said somebody else bore witness of him. Then he talked about John the Baptist. Then he talked about the works that God sent him to do. And then he finalized it and said, My Father bears witness of me. So if you ever encounter, uh, remember John chapter 5, if you ever encounter a Jesus-only type person that says it's not a trinity, uh, the true God is Jesus only, and he manifests himself in different ways. This is the question that I've come to, is like, okay, if that's true, is Jesus a liar then? Because whether he said it as Jesus or he said it as his own father, he still bore witness of himself if it's only him. So keep that question in mind for future reference if you ever encounter uh, someone who says there is no trinity, it's just Jesus. Um, so, to me, reading the Bible for what it says and believing what it clearly says is the right answer all the time. So I want to look at uh, <clears throat> some other verses. When I was doing research for this, um, you know, I looked up uh, I looked up Trinitarian verses, and I did cross references and things like that. And uh, <clears throat> as I was researching this, there was uh, over a hundred verses uh, on this one list that I found. I'm not going to read them all, uh, <clears throat> but um, suffice it to say, uh, the Bible makes it pretty clear uh, what it's talking about when it talks about God. Um, so, to save time, I'll read them off. I printed them off on the page because I have a number of them, and as the Lord leads, maybe we'll turn to some of them. Uh, <clears throat> if you're taking notes, excuse me, you can write down the references. Um, first one, we see in Matthew 3, verses uh, 16 and 17, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Uh, that's a pretty clear picture of the Trinity. Uh, <clears throat> again, in this situation, whether it's Jesus only or God the Father only, what you have to have going on here is, <clears throat> uh, well, let's go with the Jesus only approach first. Uh, Jesus is in the water being baptized by uh, John the Baptist. He uh, <clears throat> comes up from the water, and then, uh, if it's Jesus only, then Jesus... Uh, uh, does a ventriloquist act and casts his voice into heaven and says, Behold, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased, while at the same time making a picture of the Holy Spirit coming down as the form of a dove. Um, oh, and if it's Jesus only, we can rewrite the last part of this uh, verse and make it say, uh, This is my beloved me with whom I am well pleased. Uh, really? Why don't we just take for what it says? God the Father in heaven sees his son beginning his earthly ministry. 
He comes up out of the waters of baptism. The Holy Spirit lights upon him as a dove. And God says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's what it says. Why can't we believe that? Um, and some will say, well, yes, he's the son of God, but he's not God. Well, if we look back in Genesis, we see that God tells us that everything brings forth after its own kind. So if I have a son, which I do, the three of them, uh, when they were born, every single one of them was a human being. If you have a dog and it has puppies, every single one of them is a dog. If you have a cat and it has a litter, every single one of them is a cat. So if God has a son, now he didn't have it the same way that we do. Uh, he didn't have Jesus the same way we do. But if God has a son, what would the son of God be? Less than God? No. So a perfect, holy, awesome, wonderful, uh, omniscient, omnipotent, eternal God could have an offspring that's less? No. <laughs> Wouldn't that make him less than God? <laughs> if he has an offspring that's less? Uh, so every time we see the word son of God as we go through these scriptures, keep that in mind. Uh, because the son of God has to be God. Because if he's less than God, anyhow, enough said on that one. Uh, Paul's writing, and he tells us, he says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, Jesus, though he was in the form of God, uh, that word form is interesting, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, grasped but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So, first thing, have this mind in yourselves, which is ours in Christ Jesus. And what's the mind that we're supposed to have? That we're equal with God? No, there's some that teach that. Uh, what's the mind that we're supposed to have? Humility. Hmm. Humbleness. That's the whole point here. Uh, <clears throat> because Jesus was equal with God. He, was, he is God. He always has been God. He's equal with God. But he didn't think that equality with God was something to be clutched, tenaciously held to. Why? Because he wanted to obey his father. Um, and so he humbled himself and took on the form of a servant. That's the mind we're supposed to have. Mind of Christ is a mind of humility, a mind of humbleness. Uh, it's not a mind that grasps for greatness, it's a mind that lowers itself to servanthood. Um, <clears throat> There's other scriptures, since I'm thinking about it right now, there's other scriptures in the Bible that talk about Jesus being uh, submitted to the Father, uh, being obedient to the Father, uh, <clears throat> and some will use those to try and illustrate and say, see, the Bible tells us that Jesus was less than God because he submitted to God. Well, for those of us who have a job, most of us have a boss, and if we want to keep our jobs, we submit to the boss. Is my boss a greater human being because I voluntarily submit to him and do, the, do what I'm supposed to do at work? No. Voluntary submission does not make one lesser or greater than the other. So Jesus, being equal with God, humbled himself became a man uh, to obedience, we're talking about, even becoming obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. So, voluntary su uh, submission, voluntarily yielding, does not make one lesser. 
It just makes one obedient. So when you hear that one, you know, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bogus argument. I usually say, do you have a job? Of course I have a job. Do you have a boss? Yes, I have a boss. Is your boss greater than you because you submit to him? Is he more human than you are? A better human being than you are because you submit to him? Of course, the answer is no. Even, uh, <clears throat> so I know. So that one's Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Christ, who was in the form of God, equal with God, but didn't cling to that equality voluntarily. Matter of fact, he tells us in the Bible, no man takes my life. I lay it down, mm -hmm. and I take it back up again. <laughs> so it's voluntary. <laughs> and I'm so glad he voluntarily went to that cross for me and for my sins. Uh, I'm so glad he was obedient to the point of death, even though in his flesh in the garden he didn't want to go. Prayed three times, Father, if it's possible, if you can come up with another plan, I'd much appreciate it. Uh, but he went for you and he went for me, and I'm so glad. Uh, <clears throat> Usually in my messages, there's a little gospel time, so now is a good time for that. If you don't know Jesus, he died on the cross in your place for your sins. He was buried and he rose again from the dead so that you can have victory over the hell and the grave. Uh, now is the acceptable time. God the Son died on the cross, paid the price for your sins and for mine, and he rose again from the dead. All to all so that we can be saved. Now is the time. Repent and have faith in Jesus Christ and what he did. Amen. Your life will change. Now and for all eternity. Amen. John 12, 45, Jesus says, Whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. Okay? <clears throat> well, that one is kind of plays into the uh, Jesus only people and or the God only uh, the Father only people in a way uh, and whoever sees me sees him who sent me however uh, Jesus speaking and he says uh, <clears throat> spirit there's a verse in the Bible that says God is spirit and then Jesus speaking says spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see or hath not flesh and blood as you see me have so God is spirit. He doesn't have a body. But yet Jesus says, when you see me, you see, you see him who sent me. To me, the Trinity is a better answer for that than uh, Jesus manifesting himself as the Son, speaking of his Father, who at some point other than this, he'll man Jesus would manifest himself as his Father. Again, it's too much mental gymnastics for me. I just like to believe what the Bible clearly says. In John 10, 30, 30 through 36, Jesus speaking, I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, it is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Well, the Jews understood exactly what he said. The Jews understood exactly what he said, and they were going to kill him for it, because here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. Jesus didn't change that. Jesus is God. The Father's God and the Holy Spirit's God. Thus saith the Bible. Thus saith the Lord. Uh, but the Jews understood that Jesus was claiming to be God. And they were going to kill him for it. Because if Jesus hadn't been God, they would have been right. He would have been blaspheming. And it would have called for a stone pile. <clears throat> So, the Jews got it. They didn't get it, but they got it. They understood what he said and wanted to kill him for it. John uh, 14, 8 through 9. 
Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Well, again, we got the same issues if you go with a Jesus-only or a God-only approach um, to who God is. Uh, but, so, I guess the question I would ask there is, who is he manifesting himself at this moment? Is he manifesting himself as Jesus or as the Father? Because he said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. Anyhow, uh, so there's several verses of Scripture where the Bible tells us that Jesus and the Father are one. <clears throat> um, and again, in light of all the Scripture, the Trinity is the best explanation for that. Uh, not Jesus pretending to be his own Father at some points in time and... Uh, you know, doing a ventriloquist act and projecting his voice into heaven and at his baptism and so on and so forth. It, it's just too much mental gymnastics to, to um, trash what the Bible clearly teaches in an effort to uphold one's pet doctrine. Second uh, Corinthians 3.17 <clears throat> The Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Who is the Lord? Jesus Christ is Lord. So the Bible says, wait, oops, the Bible also says, now the Lord is the Spirit. Do we see two of the Trinity in action there? Is Jesus Christ Lord or is the Lord the Holy Spirit? Or is two members of the Trinity being talked about there? And then it turns around and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So the Lord is the Spirit, but yet where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Clearly, I see the, uh, well, two of the Trinity in that one, anyhow. Uh, Colossians 2.9, speaking of Jesus. For in Him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And King James would say, for in Him... The fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. Uh, so in Jesus, the whole fullness, isn't that a little redundant? You know, for in him, the wholeness of deity dwells bodily. Or we could say, for in him, the fullness of deity dwells bodily. But that's not what the Holy Spirit prompted Paul to write. Paul wrote, for in him the whole fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. So what does the whole fullness mean? Is there any room for something being missing from that? This is saying Jesus is God. The whole fullness of deity dwells in Jesus in a bodily form. Um... <clears throat> So, the whole fullness of God, of deity, dwells in bodily form. Jesus is God. Hebrews 1.3, Jesus. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds, and Jesus upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Um, again, I clearly see two members of the Trinity there. Uh, he is the radiance and glory of God, the Father, the exact imprint of his nature. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. Um, and make, after making purifications for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So there we see Jesus and God the Father interacting here. Um, so, uh, let's see. Titus 2.13 Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing 
of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. Sounds like Jesus is God. Uh, 1 Timothy 1.17 To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. 2 Corinthians Two, uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If that's not the Trinity, why bother throwing that all in there? If it's God only or Jesus only or God and then these two underlings, the Holy Spirit and Jesus the Son, if it's not the Trinity, why put all that in there? I don't, you know, I don't get it. Why not just, uh, why not just say the grace of God the Father and the love of God and the fellowship of God be with you all? Why, why why the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Why the love of God? Why the fellowship of the Holy Spirit? Because it's the Trinity. It's the Trinity. It doesn't make any sense to say all that if that's not the case. How would you dare, if Jesus and the Holy Spirit were underlings to the Father, how would you dare put him in the same sentence with God the Father? You don't, you don't see anything like this here. You don't see um, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the anointed apostles' teachings. You don't see that there. Because that would be anathema to equate the apostles with the grace of Jesus, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We wouldn't dare put any human being in that list. We wouldn't dare put anything less, anyone or anything less than God in that list. <clears throat> God does. Of course, he has no problem with that because he's the Trinity. And they're all included. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Mark uh, 12, 29, Jesus answers a question, and he says, The most important is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, is, the Lord is one. Jesus says that's the most important. One God is critically important. We do not worship three gods. We also do not worship a God like Allah. Or a God like the Jehovah's Witnesses have. Just a, a unitary God. We have a trinity. But the most important, according to Jesus, the Lord is one. Who's the Lord? Jesus Christ is Lord. What does he say here, O Israel? The Lord our God. Okay? So, um, James 2.19 you believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and they shudder. So, James tells us that you do well to believe that God is one. We as Bible-believing Christians do not believe in three gods. We believe in one Trinitarian God. Uh, oh, and by the way, even the devils, the demons, they believe and they shudder, they tremble. Uh, most of us severely lack the fear of the Lord, um, which is another whole topic uh, that I've already taught on, I think. so. Um, but even the devils, they believe and they shudder. Uh, Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6. <clears throat> Listen to all the one in this one. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. 
Okay, so this verse tells us that the Father of all is in all. Uh, Galatians 2.20 tells us that uh, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. Galatians 5 tells us that it's the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Anybody seeing the Trinity going on there? I do. Uh, <clears throat> that would be interesting for the Jesus-only people to have Jesus manifesting himself as his own Father and the Holy Spirit and himself all dwelling in us at the same time. Yeah, okay. Uh, too much mental gymnastics for me. I just can't. It, it, it's just so much easier to believe what the Bible says. Uh, another picture, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 3 through 6. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but the same God who empowers them all and everyone. So, here again, if, it's not, if, the, if God is not a trinity, why in the world do we have to have various gifts administered by the Holy Spirit, various services administered by the Lord, and various activities administered by God. Wouldn't it all be God? Seems like it to me. And it is, of course, because the Trinity is there involved. Um, so, there's another great picture of the Trinity. Uh, Luke 1.35 and the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Boy, if that isn't a picture of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High. Well, is it the Holy Spirit, or is it God the Father? And who's being begotten at that time? Jesus, the man in the womb of Mary. Um, the Holy Spirit. And then the end of it here, therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Holiness is saved for God. Holiness is something that only God has and can give. So, I, I can't, that's an awesome picture there of the Trinity. Lest you think that uh, the Trinity is just a New Testament concept, all the way back in the first book of the Bible, uh, Genesis chapter 1, uh, God's carrying on a conversation with himself. Again, if it was only one God, this would be called schizophrenia by our psychological definitions. Um, and he then said, God, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Who's us an hour? I mean, really? Is Jesus only having this three-way conversation with himself? You know, uh, he's here. Let us. Yes, let us. Yes, I agree, let us. Make man in our image. Yes, our image. Uh-huh, our image. Really? That doesn't make any sense at all. Why would God... If he was a unitary God, why would he have a conversation with himself? Doesn't he? There would, I don't get it. I don't get it. Who's us? Who's our? Uh, the uh, Hebrew word for God there is Elohim, which uh, by the ending him uh, indicates a plural, a plurality as well. Uh, so, and of course, that's not the only place. Uh, Genesis 3, 22, after sin, the Lord said, 
Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Like one of who? Who's us? You know, I'm just, I just can't possibly uh, follow a God who carries on conversations with himself. Uh, I do that sometimes. And trust me, I'm way less than perfect, so I can't explain why I have conversations with myself sometimes. Um, but anyhow, God doesn't. This is a picture of the Trinity in the Old Testament. Isaiah 6, 8 is another example. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Again, that only makes sense in light of the Trinity. So in wrapping it up, I have one more verse. Isaiah 46, 9 says, Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. So, to end with, this thought uh, hit me a while ago. God is unique. Amongst all the false gods there are in the world, our God is the only true God. So, I have this thought, polytheism, many gods. How many polytheistic religions are there? There's lots of them. Hindus, Mormons, lots of them. There lots of religions that have lots of gods. And then the thought struck me, monotheism. Of religions that have only one God, a unitary God. How many monotheistic religions are there? Lots of them. A couple are Islam, Allah, and uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Their Jehovah is a unitary God. He's obviously not the Jehovah of the Bible. Um, so there's lots of religions that have many gods. And there's lots of religions that have unitary one gods. But how many religions are there in the world that have Trinitarian gods? Only one. Our God is unique. There is none like Him. None like Him. Lots of religions with many gods. Lots of religions with only one God. But only one that has a Trinitarian God. And that makes perfect sense to me because he says there is none like me. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information about the ministry God has entrusted to us, please visit our website at www.christ-like.net. Our Christ Life site offers many free downloadable resources we hope you will visit us online soon and that our ministry will bless and strengthen your Christian life.